All day the sun had boiled down on the McBride barracks, just as it had the long summer past. At five o'clock in the afternoon, four GIs started out for the small German town nearby. It was a Saturday, early in September, 1960. Afternoon, boys. P. Gates. Okay. The same? Yeah. Where's Ossie? Won't be here till 7. Great. Where the hell is Trudy? Sorry, not till 7. <laughs> Kid, if you want to have any fun at all in this town, you're going to have to buy something stronger than Coca-Cola. Chuck, lay off the kid, will you? Hey. The girl was called Karen. She had turned 16 last April. The boy's name was Frank. He was three years older. The only son of a widowed mother. Nicht hier, Karen. Nicht jetzt. Karen Steinhoff and Frank Borkman had known each other since childhood. But their love was new to them. Then kiss me jetzt. Come. Was hat deine Mutter wieder gegen mich gesagt? Hat sie wieder gedroht? Sie schickt dich nach München, wenn du mich weiter siehst? 
Frank's caution angered her. She blamed it on his mother, who she knew wanted to separate them. Niemand wird uns trennen. No one will separate us. Dann beweis es mir doch. Then prove it to me. Du, ich glaube, da ist jemand. Niemand. Du hast recht gehabt, niemand. Gott sei Dank, ich habe schon Angst gehabt für dich. Grüß dein Mamachen schön von mir. Von mir aus kann sie dich behalten für immer. Of course no one was there. No one but Mama's shadow. Well, run along, Mama's boy, and tell Mama she can have her son. All to herself. Fellas. Hold it, Corporal. I saw it first. Come on, Jim, we gotta go. Get the hell out of there. It's okay.
you, sir. Get my clothes. Bitte, meine Sachen. I want my clothes. Nobody in town knew about the crime yet, not even Karen's father. Herr Karl Steinhoff was the local bank manager. Guten Abend, Herr Steinhoff. Guten Abend. Was ist denn hier los? Herr Steinhoff, es ist... Es ist was... Karl... Mein Kind, mein armes Kind. Dr. Orban. Sie schläft. Ich habe eine Spritze gegeben. The family doctor had given her a shot to make her sleep. Und du, du bist dabei gewesen und hast es zugelassen. And you let it happen. Gelassen! Du Lump, du Feiger! Du meinst, weil sie vier waren! Just because there were four of them. Lassen, als bei sowas zuzustehen! I'd have let them kill me first. All right, Larkin, let's go. Shirt over that Dane. He might as well have left our dog tags. He get ten years for this, you know that? Maybe even fifteen. No. Now, I told you before. You lay off the kid. Hmm? Now, Randall, you listen to me. From now on, any enlisted man that gets into trouble, on duty or off, I don't care which, goes on the record of the company commander. I've had a belly full of this buck passing. What unit are these men in? Well, I want Captain Nichols transferred out of this command in 24 hours. Do you understand? Right. How soon can you set up a court-martial? I'd say in about three or four weeks, sir. Good. The sooner the better. And I want Packenham to prosecute. Where is he now? Judge Advocate's headquarters, Heidelberg. Get him. And you better pull in the defense counsel from the outside, too. Darling, I want you to be at the disposal of the girl's doctor. Medical consultations, anything that he has in mind. 
Oh, and as far as the girl is concerned, I want you to look after her personally. I'll do that, sir. What about the press, General? I've been on my neck the whole town's in an uproar. Well, what did you expect? A vote of confidence? A mass tribute? Of course the town's in an uproar. Damned animals prowling around the countryside. Yes? The is calling on one, sir. Right, I'll take it. Good morning, Herr Burgermeister. That all sounds fine, Herr General. But if you pardon me for saying so, people here want proof of good intentions. Of course, I've tried to explain that no army should be judged by a few degenerates. But people are not open to reason when an outrage occurs. And it was an outrage. I quite agree with you, Herr Burgermeister. And we intend to treat it as such. To begin with, we plan to have this trial wide open, smack in the middle of the town. Is there uh, some sort of public building you could place at our disposal, a fairly large one? I'm sure you can have the high school gymnasium. I want everybody to see exactly how we handle a thing like this. Yes? Mr. Dowling is back, sir. Good. Send him in. Our medical officer. Well, did you see her? Just been at the hospital. She's not well at all, sir. Bad state of shock. How will this man be punished? That's the main thing. That's what I have to tell my people. According to our military law, Herr Burgermeister, for rape, there are various terms of imprisonment at hard labor, depending on the degree of the crime. The maximum penalty is death. Surely a crime like that calls for the maximum, doesn't it? The prosecutor, with my consent, asks the penalty. But only the full court, after hearing the prosecution and the defense, decides what the penalty will be. That's your law, I understand. But in the army, between us, isn't it up to the general to decide? Not in the American army. Who did you pick for the defense, Jack? Hey, boy. Guten Tag. Ich habe ein Zimmer bestellt. The first time I set eyes on the defense counsel was when he walked into my hotel. Major Garrett, sir. Yes? From the judge advocate's office. Oh, thank you, sir. Major Garrett. The wheels of American justice turn awfully fast, don't they, Major? I beg your pardon? I'm Inga Kerner. I write for the Globus, a German news weekly. Yes, I've heard of it. Oh, have you? It smells it. You work for a rotten sheet, lady. Do you consider it more fragrant work defending for monsters? I've been assigned a job here. The sooner it's finished, the happier I'll be. So will be a lot of people. May I ask you a question, Major? Look, Miss Globus, or whatever your name is, please stop following me. I'm not the following type. I'm interviewing you. Congratulations. You just set a record for the shortest interview in history. I'll be the same. Theaters of operation, Pacific, Korean, Italian, North African, bronze star, silver star with clusters. You puzzle me, Scott. How can a man with your war record behave like a low-down hood? Maybe I just forgot to declare peace, Major. You know, Scott, I don't have to be your lawyer. You have the right to choose anyone you want. I'll play the hand I drew, Major. 
Were you drunk? Can't it. Stop hunting for the fancy motives, Major. If it was hot, I was in the mood, and the dame was there. How drunk were you, Scott? Just happy. Was there anything in the girl's attitude that excited you? Well, wouldn't a naked girl excite you, Major? Boy, you sure make me wish I were on the other side. Can't you get it through that thick skull of yours? This is serious. You're either gonna hang or spend a lot of time on a rock pile. I didn't do nothing she didn't let me do. She was just lying there nice and quiet and real pretty. Prettiest little thing you ever saw. Oh, Haines, your story sounds like a Valentine message. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe you. Every word of it. Go ahead. You can tell me. Okay. It was just something that came over me, Major. Something goes wild inside me, and, and I don't care who the girl is or, or how much she begs. I just don't even pay any attention to her. She hasn't got a chance. Sit down. Now, why didn't you run away when the others did? Well, it seemed like such a shame to leave her there all alone like that. Now, you did put your shirt over her, didn't you? Yeah. Why? I don't know. She looked so small lying there. I couldn't leave her like that. Got a girl back home? Sure, everybody's got a girl back home. Are you sorry for what you did? Sure, I'm sorry, Major. Like it. The thing is, though, see, I don't know. I keep thinking maybe I'll do it again. You know what I mean? I'm telling you this for the last time. Stop selling yourself. I'm sure your mother thinks you ought to be president. But I can't use that information in court. Well, I guess I'm a little nervous about how this will look on my record, sir. <coughs> record? I've seen it. It's enough to gag a hyena. Personally, I hate your guts, but I have to defend you. I'm sorry, sir. I'll do anything I can to help. Thanks. All right. Then you saw her smoking a cigarette. That's right. And those guys thought it was kind of funny for her to be standing around out there all by Stick herself. Stick to the facts. What'd you do then? Drag her into the bushes and pull her clothes off? Well, no, sir, we just kept watching. You won't believe this, but all of a sudden, that little dame took off her bra, leaned over and slipped off her pants. And she just stood there, naked as a wait, jaybird. Wait a minute. Stood there? You mean she started to get dressed? Oh, no, sir, she didn't. You're lying. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't lie to you, sir. It sure looked to us like she was just asking for it. I see. Then maybe we ought to charge her with rape. Sit down, Snyder. Yes, sir. Ah, quite a wreckage I have here. Oh, your mother would just be proud. Nein, 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 das können wir nicht zulassen. Diese schrecklichen Menschen. I will not permit it. I must agree with your wife, Steinel. Karen must not be upset. Keep her quiet. Let her rest. You want these swine to go free? Wouldn't that set off a fine celebration out there at the barracks? If it doesn't cost anything. Next week, they'll come back and pick another young girl for their amusement. Is that what you want? Back in hand, don't you think it'd be easier for Miss Steinhoff if we turned the bed around? I'm sorry, according to law, they have to be present, but you won't have to look at them. 
Karen, I know you speak English. However, if you have any difficulty, Lieutenant Dunn, our interpreter, is here to help you. As prosecutor, it's my duty to ask you a number of questions. Some of them will be painful and embarrassing to you, but you must answer them because only you know what happened, and only your testimony can legally prove the crimes. After I've finished, Major Garrett will question you for the defense. Major Dowling, will you swear her in? Please raise your right hand. You swear that the evidence you give here shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. I now draw your attention to the events of September 5th. Late in the afternoon, you went swimming with Frank Borgman in the river near the dam, correct? Yes. As it started to get dark, you swam back to get dressed, right? Yes. And now tell us exactly what happened when you got back to where your clothes were. Suddenly, I felt something in back of me. I turned around and there was a man. Is that man in this room now? Yes. Can you point him out to us? There, on the right, the first one. Let the record reflect the witnesses identified, Defendant Sergeant Snyder. You turned around and you saw this man. And then what happened? He... He put his hand out toward me. I was scared. I... I couldn't move. Then... He grabbed me. And then? I screamed, but he wouldn't let go of me. I kept on hitting him. His face all over. He held his hand over my mouth. I could hardly breathe. Then he dragged me into the bushes and, and suddenly there were three other men. Are those three men present in this room now? Yes. Will you point them out to us? That one, that one, and that one. Let the record reflect the witnesses identified, Corporal Scott, Corporal Larkin, and Private Haynes. Please go on. me to the ground. And then? Then they held me down until he... Oh, God. They forced me. Which one of the men disrobed you? Objection. I don't think Miss Steinhoff has indicated that she was disrobed at any time. Okay, we'll do it the hard way. When they held you down, were you still wearing your bathing suit? No. Do you remember at what point you first found yourself naked? No. No. When Sergeant Snyder first grabbed you, you weren't naked, were you? I don't know. No. Well, then sometime in between, did one of the men disrobe you? Yes. Which one? There, there were all... I, I don't remember. Before going on to the next defendant, Major Garrett will ask you his questions. I have no questions. Go on, Colonel. Are you tagging me, lady? All day. Love to watch a clever defense counsel prepare his case. Or shall I call it his whitewash? Call it anything you want. I read your last opus. You like it? Crazy about it. Can't think of a better way to stir up trouble. 
You got a real talent there, Fraulein. <laughs> Do you really think freedom of the press is an American monopoly? Nope. Everybody's got the same right to dig in the mud pile. Good morning. Good morning. Hold it. Say, do me a favor, will you? Just stand right there. You're the girl. Just a moment ago, you're over there with a the boy. Probably necking, wouldn't you imagine? You're the one who's imagining. Okay. You were necking. Then, for some reason, you left him, swam back to your clothes, and over there in the bushes, those four goons are watching, right? Whatever you say. Hmm? You shouldn't be so acquiescent, get into trouble that way. Well, you're here. All you've got on is a wet bikini. This is where your clothes Just are. Just to keep the record straight, Major. I've got my clothes on, and that's exactly where they're staying. <laughs> Just imagining. Anyway, you're standing in a wet bikini. Now, what's the first thing you do? Sneeze. Look, save the jokes for your literature. What would you do? Get into my dress. Exactly. Before you do that, you have to do something else, don't you? Like what? Now, don't tell me you're going to put those nice, dry clothes on over that dripping bikini. I suppose not. You know not. Before you get dressed, you have to get undressed, don't you? In theory, maybe. Tell me, which would you take off first, the uh, bra or the shorts? The bra. Good. That's off. And then you bend over it. And I take off the rest like this. Does this satisfy your dirty mind? It wouldn't if I really had a dirty mind. Tell me, what are you trying to prove here? That Karen Steinhoff seduced those four brave, innocent American boys? Just wondering how long she stood around here naked. Really, Miss Kerner, don't you think you've flaunted yourself long enough? You better get some clothes on. Major Garrett made the rounds, picking up information from Karen's neighbors and friends and enemies. At the school, her spinster teacher's malice was as obvious as their smiles. At the little ice cream bar where she and young Barkman held hands after school, the proprietor jumped at the chance to sound off on wayward youth. But the boy's mother was more subtle and more vicious. Frank was all she had in the world, and he'd been all hers until... Oh, Frank, you're home early. Uh, this is Major... I know who he is. Hello, Frank. You were at school today, asking questions about Karen. That's right. Now you're here. And what did you tell him? Ich verbitte mir diesen Ton, Frank. Then keep him away from here. All he wants is gossip. You see? He gets more difficult every day. It's understandable. He's in love. <laughs> love. What would a 19-year-old boy know about love? I work like a dog here, just for him. But she has got him so mixed up that he doesn't know what he's doing now anymore. Look. His marks are bad in school. Don't get so upset. I don't want to say anything against Karen. There's been too much scandal already. Yes, I understand. Maybe we better continue our chat some other time, huh? I'll be the same for both. Oh, and thank you very much.
Tag, Elsie. Tag. So, oder? Ja. I and Elsie had a date with them that night. If they'd only waited for us, the whole thing maybe never would have happened. You know all four of them? Oh, sure. All except, well, I don't know the kid so well. Uh, Jim... Uh... Larkin. Yeah. Did you ever go out with him? Just once, but he was too shy. <laughs> How about the other three? Were they shy, too? Oh, no, they are nice guys. I'm sorry they got in trouble. But what the hell, the try is good for business. How do you mean? Why do you think we got such a crowd tonight? Because they are so scared they are leaving the town girls alone for a change. Of course, watching. I'm not supposed to sit here unless you buy another round. So I doubled the bit. How long are they going to keep him locked up? Well, it may not be very long. They're asking the death sentence. Death. That shows what happens when you go out with town girls. You just love these town girls, don't you? Yeah, like poison. <laughs> so fine and fancy, turning up their stupid noses at us. But, brother, when nobody is looking, you should see them go to it. <laughs> and don't think sweet little Miss Steinhoff is such a lily either. <laughs> Has she got people fooled? How do you know? My cousin Frieda does housework and cooking for the Steinhoffs. She is seeing Karen at work. <laughs> Dames are all the same under the skin when it comes to that. Does she work there every day? Sure. Why? Do you think she'll do you a little favor? <laughs> More than a little. He Puts God is iron us again. Noch zwei, bitte. Make it three. Oh, Miss Kern, sit down. Thanks. Giving a party, Major? Oh, this is true to your friend of mine, Miss Kerner, a town girl. Don't forget, there's a house commissioner if you take him out. Does she resent my amateur status? Well, wouldn't you? Good kid, though. I'm sure, charming. Uh, tell me, Major, may I ask you a question? Can I stop you? Stephen Garrett, universities, Wisconsin and Columbia. Married twice, divorced twice. Children, none. Purple hearts, two. Now snooping in every corner of the town, collecting filth to throw at a little girl who's lying in a hospital bed, for reasons we won't mention. You like the work? I get a bang out of it. And one night in Korea, I had to shoot an enlisted man. He'd gone berserk and was setting off flares in a concealed position. Just ten feet away from me, and I killed him. Just like that. I got a bang out of that, too. It's a touching story. You should tell it to Karin Steinhoff. She could have a good cry over it. If these four men hang, that'll cheer her up. That wipes it all out and everything's rosy again. Nothing will ever wipe it out for her, Major. Why don't we have a trial at all? Why don't we just lynch her? Well, the mob's big enough. You, the newspapers, the town, the brass. Why do you suppose the law provides him with a counsel to defend him? So that he doesn't defend him? It would have cost him four lousy bucks right here at the Florida bar. To risk your neck for something that cheap, you have to be sick, wouldn't you? Crazy, stupid, and sick. You get pretty upset about things, don't you? Well, when it comes to hanging people, yes. Well, at least I found out what I wanted to know. What's that? How you feel about your work. Hmm. You know more than I do. Excuse me. Do you think your cousin can get something for me from the Steinhoff house? Just name it. I'd like to take a look at the bikini she wore that afternoon.
not understand. Was ist das? Negotiate. Uh, Herr Steinhoff, a negotiated plea means that if I'm convinced of the defendant's guilt, I can get together with the prosecutor in advance of the trial, and the two of us can work out a satisfactory sentence. Then, uh, are you prepared to plead your defendants guilty? Three of them, yes, if Colonel Pakenham agrees to limit the sentence to 20 years and dishonorable discharge. He's no three. There are four men. Everybody knows there are four. I'm not convinced that all four of them are guilty. In the case of Corporal Larkin, sir, I must reserve freedom of action. Colonel? Sir, I find the evidence of guilt in this case so overwhelming. As far as I'm concerned, a negotiated plea is out of the question. Yeah, absolutely. Das wäre auch noch schöner. Ich... What penalty have you in mind, Colonel? In view of the singular brutality of this crime, I have no choice but to ask your approval of the death sentence. Sir, this is a dirty case. Nobody comes out of a dirty case as clean as he went in. It's bad for the town. It's bad for the army. It's worse for the girl. And in my opinion, sir, justice won't be served if the death penalty is invoked. Was later dead in the... In Germany... In Germany, Herr Steinhoff, you don't even have capital punishment. The death penalty is on our books, and I'm inclined to believe there must be a reason. If you don't ask a maximum for a crime of this sort, just when do you ask it? Very well, Colonel. We are not interested in negotiating the plea, Major. Sir, may I say one more word to Herr Steinhoff? Thank you. Do you realize what a terrible strain this will be on your daughter? The, uh, schwer es für sie sein wird to testify at this trial? It's the death penalty that worries Major Garrett, not your daughter. You see, by law, she's obliged to take the witness stand, and she must remain there until she completes her entire testimony and is dismissed. If she does not do so, then the death penalty cannot be invoked. But it must be! Not if I can help it. Herr Steinhoff, with a negotiated plea, Karen won't have to take the witness stand, and I'd much prefer not to cross-examine her. But hasn't she already been cross-examined? Not by me. Not in a public courtroom. And my questions won't be as gentle as Colonel Packenham's. You don't have to worry about my daughter, sir. Nonetheless, I do, Herr Steinhoff. I do. The trial began on Tuesday, the 10th of October, at 9 p.m., in the high school gymnasium. This court will come to order. Court-martial is convened at the Ludwig High School, Neustadt, Germany, by order of Major General Lucius B. Strafford, commanding. This is to be tried as a capital case of rape. Therefore, I'd like to question the court. You may proceed with your questioning. Colonel Weldon, if the accused are found guilty and the evidence of this case warrants it, will you object to the death penalty? No, sir. Lieutenant Colonel McKenna? If the evidence of this case warrants it, will you object to the death penalty? No, sir. Major Miller, if the evidence of this case warrants it, will you object to the death penalty? No, sir. Major Podolsky, if the evidence of this case warrants it, will you object to the death penalty? No, sir, not in the least. Captain Horner, if the evidence of this case warrants it, will you have any objection to the death penalty? No, sir. Lieutenant Kennedy, if the evidence of this case warrants it, will you have any objection to the death penalty? 
Browner, if the evidence of this case warrants it, will you have any objection to the death penalty? No, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Major Garrett. Defense assists two peremptory challenges, sir. Lieutenant Colonel McKenna, Major Fedovsky. Lieutenant Colonel McKenna and Major Fedovsky will be excused. The court will now be sworn. Mr. Law Officer, there's already on record a deposition which the prosecutrix made in the hospital. I move that in view of her health, the court refrain from calling her as a witness in order to spare her additional nervous strain and the embarrassment of public testimony. May it please the court. I should only have wished that the accused would have shown the same concern for the welfare of the prosecutrix as the major himself now displays. Counsel for the defense is surely not unaware that the death penalty can only be given in this case if the prosecutrix is available for testimony in person. I therefore move that the motion be denied. Motion denied. Trial counsel may proceed. Sergeant Snyder, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, sir. Corporal Scott. Not guilty, sir. Private Haynes. Not guilty, sir. Corporal Larkin. Please answer the question. Guilty or not guilty? Sir, I know how I'm supposed to plead. But I also know what I did. So if I'm going to be honest about it, I have to plead guilty. Because, sir, I am guilty. I did disregard that. The law grants him the right to plead not guilty and place the burden of proof on the prosecution. But, sir, I Therefore, did. if it pleases the court, Corporal Larkin changes his plea to not guilty. <laughs> Proceed, Colonel Packenham. Next witness, Frank Borgman, please. Guten Tag, Karin. Tag, Frank. We have another room for you, Fräulein. It will be more quiet there. Thank you. You swear that the evidence you shall give in this case shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. State your full name, age, and your profession. Frank Borgmann, 19, student. Do you know the accused in this case? Yes, two of them. Him and him. And that's where I found her, lying on the ground, the man's shirt over her. What did she have on under this shirt? Nothing. And then what occurred? I helped her get dressed. Then I carried her through the forest until I got to the road. The car gave us a lift. Why did you carry her? Because she couldn't walk by herself. No further questions. Hey, Bob, when you said you and Karen had taken a sun bath. It's getting dark. Karen had to go home, so she swam back to the other side to get dressed. Is that correct? Yes. The current's pretty strong there, isn't it? Oh, yes. Well, why'd you allow her to swim back alone? Please answer the question. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. You don't remember anymore? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, it was kind of late, and she was in a hurry to go home. Well, isn't it usual in Germany to see a young lady home? Well, of course, but... But this time you didn't. 
Why not? I... I was going to take her home. I just wanted to give her time to get dressed. Oh. Well, while you were lying there taking this uh, sun bath, did you two kiss? Probably. We kiss sometimes. Thank you, Herr Borgman. I reserve the right to call him back later. At first, I... I couldn't believe it. Meine Karin und... And so was so And something so bestial. I know I... I should call Dr. Urban, but... I was so mixed up. Frank had called for me. Was she unconscious? Please. Was she in her senses? Did she know you? Was sie bei Bewusstsein? Hat sie sie erkannt? Yes, yes. But she didn't speak. On the contrary, I always encourage my daughter to go in for sports. Skiing, tennis, swimming, all kinds of exercise. That's what made her such a healthy, happy girl. A girl I was proud of. I think we all realize the difficulties of bringing a young girl up among the dangers and temptations of modern life. Tell me, sir, did Karen ever give you cause for concern in this respect? Objection. Irrelevant and immaterial. I'm attempting to establish the character and conduct of the prosecutrix before the events to which this trial relates. The law, officer. Objection withdrawn. Karin never gave us anything but happiness. Even as a small child, she made friends wherever she went. My wife and I could always trust her, 100%, if he told her to be home at 10. She was home at ten, on the dot. Tell me, Herr Steinhoff, have you had any indication that uh, Karen's future has been damaged through this experience? I have, indeed, unfortunately. I've received anonymous letters in this town, hinting uh, um, böse... Evil. Uh, yes, evil things about my daughter. Karin had the whole world open to her until... Until those animals over there smashed everything to bits. Objection. I move that the last sentence be stricken in the court instructed to disregard it. They are animals. Hanging is too good for them. There will be no demonstrations in this courtroom. Unless silence is observed, I'll have the room cleared. Objection sustained. Strike the witness's last two sentences from the record. No further questions. Thank you, Herr Steinhoff. Yeah, just a minute, Herr Steinhoff. Did you ever catch your daughter in a lie? I beg your pardon? Most children do lie occasionally. Not my daughter. She has never told a lie in her entire life. I'm sorry. No further questions. The prosecution calls Dr. Franz Urban. And what did the laboratory analysis show? It established derivation from two different blood groups. Would that mean that only two different men were involved? It would not. I merely said two blood groups. Many people have the same blood group. Tell me, doctor, would it be perfectly possible that four men were involved? Perfectly. Would the witness speak up, please? We can't hear him. I said perfectly. Did you notice any injuries that pointed to a previous struggle? I did. The patients had a number of bruises and contusions. Thank you, Doctor. No further questions. Uh, Dr. Urban, you've testified that it's possible that four men were involved. Am I correct in assuming that your tests cannot prove the participation of more than two? Well, uh, <clears throat> yes, that is so. Thank you. No further questions. The prosecution calls witness Karen Steinhoff. Next witness, Ms. Karen Steinhoff,
Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you shall give in this case shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Like in a horrible dream, I couldn't move or make a sound. I just prayed he'd go away. All the time he kept standing there, looking down at me. Then he bent down. I felt him cover me with something. Then he ran away after the others. You said before you stopped screaming because you were afraid these men might kill Frank. Is that right? Yes. I heard him calling me. Then right after, I hit fighting and I didn't want to. I understand. You're very fond of Frank Borgman, aren't you? Yes. Had you made any plans for your future together? Sometimes we did talk about getting married when we're older. You say that as though something has happened to make you change your plans, has it? Well, everything is different now. Frank, he might feel ashamed of me. Tell me, Fräulein. Well, that's all right. No further questions. No questions. But I reserve right to call a witness back at another time. You are excused, Fräulein Steinhoff. Thank you. And since when hasn't the press the right to interview prisoners? The prosecution has no objection. The defense does have objections. Get the boys together for me, will you? I'll take Larkin first. Yes, sir. Don't forget the coffee. Yes, sir. Actually, for the purpose of my story, you'll do, Major. Do you still think you're going to beat the death sentence? I think so. What makes you so sure? Three reasons. First, because all witnesses lie a little. Second, because age hates youth and ugliness hates beauty. But third, because there's no way of measuring the incomparable nastiness of the human mind. Now, if you'll excuse me, Miss Globus, uh, Miss Kerner, I've got some work to do. Major Garrett, could you come quickly, please? I knew this guy belonged in a booby hatch. <laughs> you all right? Ah, he's more scared than he is hurt. Let's get him on the cot. Forbidden the meet me the hospital. Here I am beating my brains out for you. You try to sneak out the back door. I'm sorry. I promise I won't try it again. I promise you won't get the chance. Keep a 24-hour watch on him. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Trudy. Here it is. Don't tell anybody where it came from. I'm afraid I'll be out of a job. Good girl. I owe you a dinner for this. Are they really going to hang the boys? Maybe. Then why don't you do something? What do you suggest? Nail that Steinhoff kid. You had her there today, and you didn't even ask her one question. That was an oversight. I'll make up for that tomorrow. Just because her father's a banker, that makes her some kind of saint? I don't know. What do you think? I know she isn't. And right over there's a proof. Fagulli. All the dirt you can use. Wiedersehen. Gotta get back to work. Good morning, Fagulli. Was machst du denn hier? Du bist doch nicht etwa Zeugin. Ich tue es nicht gerne, aber ich muss. Deinetwegen. Frank was appalled to find his mother a witness. 
Even though she protested, she did it only in his interest. Dr. Reisman, you're on the psychiatric board of the Army Base Hospital. Not exactly. Occasionally, I'm called in as a special consultant. Mm. Now, when was the first time that you, that you examined Jim Larkin? Last June. And what was the condition of Corporal Larkin when you examined him last June? He was subject to sudden attacks of paralysis, which couldn't be traced to any organic uh, disorder. After a series of sessions with the patient, I concluded that since puberty, he has suffered from a severe inferiority neurosis. Nerve tests indicated a state of chronic impotence. That's a lie. That's a lie, you lousy doctor. There's nothing wrong with me. You're, you're a quack, fake doctor. There's nothing wrong with me. Order, please, order. Quiet. Break down your jerk. He's trying to help you. Now, uh, doctor, will you tell the court the last time you examined Jim Larkin? Five weeks ago. Now, how did you find him at that time? He was responding to psychotherapy. Paralysis had largely disappeared. Reflexes were still sluggish. The neurosis was still rather severe. And the condition of impotence? Stop saying that. There's no condition of anything. Because there's nothing wrong with me, you, you stinking doctor. Why do you keep lying? I, there's nothing wrong with me. You, you're, you're lying because he told you to, huh? He, you're a liar, damn you! Damn you! You told him to lie. You, you told him to lie. You tell him to shut the hell I did it! You're a liar, damn you! Damn you! You told him to lie! Mr. Law Officer, may we have a brief recess, please? Court is recessed for 30 minutes. Yes, I know the skiing cabin. Up to a year ago, I used to go there myself with my son. There are two small rooms. Now, how do you know that Karen and your son spent the weekend there together? When I took his suit to the cleaner, I found two tickets for the ski lift in his pocket. He tried to deny it at first, but after we had a good talk together, he finally admitted it. Why did you oppose your son's association with Miss Steinholz? I did not want him to be made a fool of by a teenager who had nothing else in her silly head than to get married. Mr. Law Officer, these questions and answers are clearly and intentionally defamatory. Whether Fräulein Steinhoff is liked or disliked by witness, whether witness welcomes or opposes her son's association with Fräulein Steinhoff, or where Fräulein Steinhoff elects to spend her weekends, is in no way pertinent to this case. We are here solely to determine whether or not the four accused are guilty of rape. Yesterday, Colonel Packenham rebutted a similar objection of mine. He said, and I quote, I am attempting to establish the character and conduct of the prosecutrix. Today, I claim the same privilege. Let's not forget that four lives depend on her testimony. Objection overruled. Now, what did your son have to say when you reproached him for having spent the weekend with Miss Steinhoff? He begged me not to say anything about it to Karen's parents. But why not? Because she had lied to them. She told them she was going to spend the weekend with girlfriends. Well, thank you. That'll be all. Herr Schmidt, what is your occupation? Head bookkeeper at Schnack and Pellmann. Ladies were. How long have you been employed there? 34 years and three months. Do you know the Steinhoff family? Yes. We live in the same street. Is it true that you can see from your living room into Karen Steinhoff's bedroom? That's correct. What's the distance? Approximately. 50 meters, maybe less. Less. Have you ever seen anything from this window that struck you as uh, peculiar? Yes, most peculiar. Uh, tell the court. Since last spring, Fräulein Steinhoff has the habit to exercise every morning in front of the open window in the nude. Objection, Mr. Law Officer. It is totally irrelevant to this case how, when, or where Fräulein Steinhoff chooses to exercise. Objection overruled. Did Fräulein Steinhoff in any way ever indicate to you that she was aware of having a spectator? She most certainly did. Objection. This is merely a conclusion by the witness. It is not, Mr. Law Officer. It will become apparent immediately. Objection overruled. Herr Schmidt, 
Describe the events of a certain morning when Karen Steinhoff was aware of being watched. Well, she was again standing before the window mm -hmm. when she uh, turned around and she saw me looking at her. And she had the first height. Impertinence. To, uh, to, uh, I, I do not know how to say it in English. Say it in German. Well, she, uh, she made, we call it eine lange Nase, like that. <laughs> Let the record reflect that the witness made a nose-thumbing gesture. Thank you. No further questions. Herr Schmidt, did you ever draw the Steinhoff's attention to their daughter's behavior? Why should I? We do not meet socially. Even though your neighbors? The house I live in belongs to the bank. In business, Herr Steinhoff can be most unfriendly. Then you're not on good terms with the Steinhoffs. You may put it that way. Thank you. No further questions. Herr Schmidt, is your dislike of the Steinhoff family so strong that here, under oath, you give false testimony? What? Of oh, Gottes Willen? Nein, never. Thank you. No further questions. Uh, thank you. Now, Frank, you told us yesterday afternoon that you let Karen swim back alone so she'd have time enough to get dressed. Now, think it over, Frank. Could there possibly have been another reason? Another reason? No. Are you quite sure there wasn't? I don't know what you mean. Well, for example, uh, you could have had a quarrel. Did you? It was getting dark, and, and I wanted That's to... That's not what I asked you. I don't remember. Hmm. Well, you can't remember whether you had a quarrel with her. Well, is it possible that your memory of other events is equally imperfect? Her screams, for example, your fight, and all the rest? No, I remember all of that perfectly. Then please remember that you're under oath, and I want to know, did you or did you not have a quarrel with Karen Steinhoff? We had no quarrel. Witness dismissed. Will Frau Kulig take the stand? Scraped in the bottom of the barrel, isn't he? Bottom of the sewer, if you ask me. You raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you shall give in this case will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Will you state your name and occupation, please? Bertha Kulik, widow. You know Karen Steinhoff? Oh, yes. Her I know. When and where did you see her last? On the 5th of September, late in the afternoon, on the riverbank near the dam. Was she alone? That's just it. No. <laughs> she was with Bobman boy. Now, what were the two of them wearing? Uh, he had a black badenhose on. Swimming trunks. Yeah, and she had on a, a blue bikini with white spots. Now, would you describe to the court this bikini more exactly? There isn't much to describe. A few little spots on top and downstairs, not much more. <laughs> now, what were the two of them doing there? The knutscht haben sie sich. They were naked. Oh, you mean they were kissing? Yes, but the real thing, uh, not the way you kiss your mother. Did their bodies touch? <laughs> First, he was half on top of her, and then it was the other way around. <laughs> Did you hear what was said? Yes, everything. Kiss me, she said. I don't know how many times. Kiss me. I thought you said he had already kissed her. Yes, but not the way she wanted. That's what made her so upset. That's why she called him a muttersöhnchen. What's that? A mama's boy. Yeah. And then she yelled to him that his mother was coming between them. And when he absolutely didn't want to do what she wanted. Stop! Are we going to elevate pure gutter gossip to the status of evidence? What she wanted. This witness hasn't pronounced one word to prove that Fräulein Steinhoff had anything indecent in mind. <laughs> you should have been there. What? You should have been there. I don't sure I'll have the courtroom cleared. I must admonish the witness to testify only to those things she actually saw or heard. 
All sentences, including and following the one objected to, will be stricken from the record. Now, what did you see or hear that would show what Karen Stein have wanted from Frank Borg? I don't know what to do here. Speak, not speak. Everything is tracked out. Objection. Now, Frau Fusik, bitte. <laughs> All right. Then the boy said, nobody can come between us. And she, uh, she tittered all over. She trembled. Yes. And then she said, prove it to me. And uh, she looked it up to him. I don't like it, Major. Not at all. The girl should have recovered long ago. What can you do? Every time something like this happens, she slips right back again. Tag, Frank. Want you to Karin? Yeah. I wouldn't. Not now. Is something wrong? Yes. She's received another anonymous letter. Oh, no. What, this time? It's about your mother's testimony and what this Kulig woman said. Um Gottes willen. What makes people do things like this? Yes, such a small town and so much hate and meanness. That afternoon, Herr Steinhof had lost his starch and his pride. He was a stranger in his own house. Warum sitzt du denn im Dunkeln? Wenn du was essen willst, es ist was im Eischrank. Ich gehe mal ins Krankenhaus. Ich bin so unruhig. She hated to leave him like this, but an uneasy feeling about Karen nagged at her, drew her to the hospital. Ich will bei euch sein. wanted to be home. Ist Papa hier? Ja, aber es ist vielleicht besser. Eine schöne Tochter habe ich. A lovely daughter. Eine schöne Tochter. Eine schöne Tochter. I know you don't want to speak to me, Herr Steinhoff, but you should. Really, you should. Warum hast du ihn hereingelassen? Ich lasse euch allein. How dare you come to my house? I want to talk to you about Karen. Da hört sich doch alles auf. Have you no shame? No decency? No, I guess not. You don't know the meaning of shame. I ask you for the last time, withdraw from this trial. Ah, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Please pull her out of this mess while you still have time. Today you tried everything to make her a liar and a tramp in front of the whole town. Yes, Steiner, and I'm now you want her to run away so that everyone is sure to believe it. Listen for just one minute. You know that no German can be forced to appear as a witness in an American court martial. Only you can force her. I don't have to. My daughter knows what she has to do. Don't let her. You'll never forgive yourself if you do. Are you threatening me? I'm not threatening. I'm begging you. I'll go to your general. I'll report you. Do anything you want, but understand me. 
Karen were my daughter, I'd leave this town before I'd let her appear tomorrow. Leave my town? What do you think I am? An American who has no town? Who's always building new towns? Who has no feeling for the place where he was born? Isn't your daughter more important than a pile of stones? That pile of stones, Herr Major, is where my grandfathers were born and buried before you or America even existed. What's that got to do with your daughter? How can a man like you understand? You spring from nothing. You come from nowhere. I will not let you drive me from my town. You know, Herr Steinhoff, I was born in an American town that was founded 134 years before Germany became a nation. I'm very fond of my town, too, but I'd leave it gladly and never look back if I had a daughter who had... But Karin is my daughter. She'll do what I say. I'll fight you. But you won't fight me. Karen will, and she's not strong enough. Get out of my house. All right, here's Steinhoff. Just remember, with or without Karen, those four boys were not hanged. There could be no death sentence unless I've cross-examined Karen in full. And until she's been dismissed by me, she won't be able to stand it. Damn you! I'm a good lawyer, Herr Steinhoff. I know my business. I'll make sure she won't be able to stand it. So if you have any luck... Get out of my house! Bitte, ich tue alles, was du willst. What kind of way is this to run around in front of strangers? Papa, du brauchst dich doch nicht zu aufregen. It's late, Major Garrett. Please leave us alone. There is another great German lawyer, uh, Rudolf Vanieri. Now, he said the defense of man's rights is the poetry of law. Defense of man's rights, I don't know, something like that. You remember how it goes? I don't even know the gentleman. No. Huh? Man, I hate to misquote a fellow like that. Yeah, anyway, he's dead. You know, but dead or alive, a man's got a right to be quoted correctly. Getting loaded. Oh, Miss Globus. Man, sit down. Have a drink. Thanks. I'll have one, too. Well... The ugly made a fine case against the beautiful today, didn't they? They generally do. Make a lot better case tomorrow, though. Karen shows up. Why don't you stop it? No can do. Oh, it's like a river. A great, big, wide, deep river. Once you jump in, the current grabs you and... No way to stop. And an old river of the law carries everything along with it. Boats, barges, scows, people, sewage. It sure was a lovely pair you put on the stand today. Mm. Oh, this Herr Schmidt, I could... Oh, don't be too tough on the poor old devil. Mm. I bet you ten to one that Herr Schmidt never had the guts to touch a woman in his whole life. You know, maybe everything would have been different if just one some pretty girl had blown a kiss instead of thumbing her nose at him. <laughs> then one morning, Karen stood in front of that window. He saw her there. Yeah, he saw beauty. The one dazzling moment of beauty in his whole life. It's out of reach. 
Push me. Who can? Poor everybody. You just broke my heart. You ought to be a poet. I'll quote you in my piece. Now you just do that. Why you at it? Give him a little advice. 43, 40. Tell him never to get into a lawsuit. Never. No matter who they are. No matter how good a case they've got. No matter how virtuously they live, never get into a lawsuit. Hasta la vista. I'll be the same. Bonsoir. Good night. Just never get into a lawsuit. have to be sworn in a second time. You're still considered under oath. Thank you. Your witness, ma'am. Now, Karen, are you feeling better today? Yes. Don't be nervous. Just feel at ease. I'll make it as short as possible. Thank you. Oh, one thing first. I ask that this be marked as Defense Exhibit E. May it be so marked, Mr. Law Officer? So ordered. Will you tell the court, Karen, whether this is the bikini you wore on the afternoon of September the 5th? Yes, that's it. I offer this evidence as Defense Exhibit E. Now, Karen, how did your parents feel about your going out with Frank Borgman? They didn't like it. My father said we were too young. Now, this attitude on the part of your parents made it difficult for you and Frank to see each other? Yes. But you did manage somehow? Yes. How? I didn't always say when exactly where I was going. I see, like the time you went skiing with Frank was testified that you spent a weekend with him at a ski cabin. Your father didn't know about that, did he? He... He didn't know Frank was alone. No. Let's go back for a moment, Karen. A witness at this trial, uh, your neighbor, Herr Schmidt, testified that you exercised in front of the window in the nude, that when you saw him watching you, you thumbed your nose at him. That nasty old man! Did you tell your parents about that incident? No. I didn't. Well, but Karen, why not? I didn't want my father to know I forgot to pull the curtains. And sometimes I'm careless. He's very strict about those things. It's further testimony than when you and Frank were lying on the river bank, you had your arms around each other and you kissed. Is that right? Yes. It was also stated you left abruptly, you had a quarrel. No, not a quarrel. It, it was... Well, just a few crosswords, perhaps a spat. Yes, that's it. Then you called him a mama's boy, jumped up and swam across the river, right? Yes. And when you got back to where you left your clothes, what did you do? I, well, I lit a cigarette and just stood there for a minute. And while you were standing there, these four men came up and dragged you away. Yes. And then, as you previously testified, your bikini was ripped off you. Oh, is that how it happened? And you were raped. Now, Karen, describe to the court what happened after... No, no, never mind. You've already testified to this in direct examination by Colonel Packenham. No use rehashing all the embarrassing details. Fraulein Steinhoff, I show you Exhibit C for the prosecution, the shirt. Worn on the afternoon of the crime by Defendant Snyder. 
You'll observe that it's ripped in several places. Were those rips and tears made by you? I... I don't know for sure. Maybe they were. You see, I was trying to fight him off. Exactly. You were struggling. Defendant Snyder looks like a strong man, yet you were able to inflict considerable damage on his shirt. Do you find any rips or tears in either of these garments? Well, no. Since you were struggling with Defendant Snyder, it follows that he was also struggling with you. One tug from a strong man should rip that bikini to bits, shouldn't it? Objection! Witness is not obliged to answer to counsel's conjecture. Withdraw the question. May I? Bikini looks pretty flimsy. One strong tug should rip it to shreds. Did Sergeant Snyder tear them off? Or did you let him take them off? Well, I... Answer the question. I, I didn't let him do anything. I... I didn't even have them on. I took them off so I could get dressed. So you were naked the first time you saw these four men? Yes, sir. Just but I... as you were naked when Herr Schmidt looked out of the window. No, it was different. Herr Schmidt did see you naked, didn't he? It was my own. How about room. Frank Baldwin? He's the one you say you love. Didn't he see you naked that weekend at the mountain? No, the girl slept in one room. Answer the question. Did Frank Baldwin see you naked then? Yes or no? No. Well, you lied about your nakedness in front of these four men, didn't you? Only because I was ashamed. Yes or no? Yes. Did you lied to your father, yes or no? Yes. Are you lying now when you say Frank Borgman didn't see you naked that weekend? Objection. Withdrawn. Has Frank Borgman ever seen you naked? No, never. Well, you've already testified that you were standing there by the river, naked as we now discover, and you were looking at him. If he were looking at you, could he have seen you, yes or no? I don't know. You don't know? Well, if you could see him, then he could see you, and you were naked. You see naked like it was... Her witness can find her remarks to yes or no. Did Frank Borgman see you naked? I don't know. Then you cannot swear that he has never seen you naked, can you? No. But you did swear. Yes. And so you took off your clothes and stood there so he would look at you. Oh, no. 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 This is incredible. He's constantly putting words into his mouth. I'm trying to get the truth out of the mouth. I'm not going to see four men hang on a rope of lies. And that's what we have here, sir. Straight lies. Objection overruled. All right. Established that five men, possibly six, have seen Fraulein Steinhoff naked. Does it give you pleasure, Fraulein Steinhoff, to expose your body to men? Oh, God, no! But you did strip in full view of Frank Borgman with the deliberate intention of exciting him, didn't you? Oh, no, I... Then for whose excitement did you stand naked? Was it perhaps for these four men? Oh, I, I didn't know they were there. And when you did see them, what did you do? Thumb your nose at them? Oh, I can't. I can't. I don't know anything anymore. Oh, no, let me help you remember. Frank was a mama's boy, so you left him. You were alone. You were naked. You still wanted a man's arms around you. You still wanted to kiss his fright with you. And suddenly standing beside you was a man. Any man. The men you were waiting for. Scott, Larkin, Snyder, Haynes. Oh, no. Don't say those Objection. things. Objection. I protest, Mr. Law Officer. This is no cross-examination. This is a circus. I move the defense counsel be recommended for So, on the 13th of October, the hearing of the witnesses came to an end. Herr Steinhoff withdrew his daughter from the trial. You were terrific.
sie, schuft sie, Elender! I don't kill you! You, you want to kill me? Then what are you doing with this? If you really want to kill somebody, then take a gun or a knife. Don't try to prove you're a man to me. Prove it to the girl. Don't you realize she loves you? Take her and get out of this town as fast as possible. You'll never come back. Quarrels and ugly scenes had become a daily custom in the Steinhof household. And always Karen knew she was the cause. Ich will wissen, ob Frank hier ist. Wenn Sie es mir nicht sagen, rufe ich die Polizei. Sind Sie verrückt geworden? Ihr Frank kommt hier ebenso wenig rein wie Sie. Wissen Sie, was er heute gemacht hat? Er hat meine Unterschrift gefälscht. Auf einem Scheck über 2000 Mark. Would nothing ever be normal again? Now Frank's mother was here looking for him. Forged her signature on a check and disappeared. Probably had it in a silly head to run off with their sex mad brat. If they didn't prevent it, maybe the police would. Your mother's here. Ich warte auf dem Holzplatz, am Bahnhof. I'll wait at the lumber yard. Karen begged him to go home, forget her. They couldn't possibly run away with this hanging over them. But Frank's mind was set. Papa hat sie mir hinterlassen. Wenn ich 21 It was his money anyway, from his father, for his 21st birthday. But he'd work, pay it back. Or didn't she trust him?
Leute an. Sind Sie Frank Borgmann? Bitte lassen Sie uns fahren, Herr Wachtmeister. Machen Sie keine Umstände, wir haben einen Haftbefehl. Gegen wen? Das Fräulein hat mit der ganzen... Gegen Sa Sie, Herr Borgmann. Bitte kommen Sie jetzt mit. Hab keine Angst, ich bringe das in Ordnung. Frau Borgmann made good her threat. She had preferred a charge of forgery against her son. Jetzt muss ich das Fräulein wohin bringen. Dringend. Kommen Sie, kommen Sie. Machen Sie bitte keine Geschichten. Ach, dringend. Bitte lassen Sie uns Also fahren. kommen Sie jetzt oder nicht? Das ist doch nur eine Sache zwischen mir und meiner Mutter. Dann wird Ihnen ohnehin nicht viel geschehen. Sie verstehen mich nicht. Ich habe ja gesagt, diese junge Dame... Diese junge Dame wird sich dann eben etwas gedulden. Haben Sie doch etwas Verständnis, Herr Wachmeister. Also nun Schluss, Herr Wachmeister. Kommen Sie jetzt. Charles B. Snyder, it is my duty as president of this court to inform you that the court sentences you to be dishonorably discharged and to be confined at hard labor for 25 years. Corporal Birdwell Scott, it is my duty as president of this court to inform you that the court sentences you to be dishonorably discharged and to be confined at hard labor for 16 years. Corporal James Larkin, it is my duty as president of this court to inform you that the court sentences you to be dishonorably discharged and to be confined at hard labor for six years. Private Joseph E. Haynes... And Haynes was the last of the four. Just as calmly as the others, he stood up and heard himself sentenced to 20 years at hard labor and dishonorable discharge. Stephen Garrett, the legal lion who had battled the death sentence so fiercely, was at their side. He seemed a pretty tame, almost an indifferent lion, now that the fight for their lives had been won. Judging by the handful of spectators in the courtroom, there was a general falling off of interest in the proceedings. Here and there, a few grumbles were heard about the relatively lenient sentence Corporal Scott's brilliant war record had earned him. But on the whole, everyone agreed the sentencing was fair. How... how did your men react to being spared the death penalty? You weren't there either. No. Three straight days we had a hit show, standing room only. This afternoon we were a flop. No girl to be stripped in public. No chance to see the light go out of men's eyes when death is pronounced. No sex, no death. Where's the fun? So you and the town stayed home. I was trying to line up a story on Karen. Well, I hope you got a beauty. I did. She's dead. How? Suicide. Ended in the river. Right near where it all began. Excuse me. I forgot my toothbrush. Major Garrett, I'm sorry for a lot of things I thought about you. Don't be. You're probably right. This morning, yeah, fished her out. 
Oh, I would say about uh, eight or nine last night. I got a honey of a story from the girl's teacher, a real tearjerker. You covering the funeral? Mm-mm. Sure, I got a picture of her. But I thought we weren't allowed to use it. Of course, you can print it now. The girl's dead. Tchau.